It seems like Ableton want to distract us from the fact that you can turn any sample into a synth with this kind of forgotten device. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a poor clickbait, so let me explain. They gave us Drum Sampler, which works great for the sole purpose of it. Next, there's obviously Simpler. I bet you use it daily for samples and chopping, and that's actually a good practice, but not nearly as powerful and feature-packed as the good old Sampler. Wait, but how this millennial of a device can be more powerful than something fresh and new? And it doesn't have AI features built in. Well, let's start from scratch. You can drag any sample into it, but instead of using bass one shot and calling it a day, let's use a snare for example. Yeah, so for now it sounds nothing like a synth, but once you activate the looping mode here and make a very short loop, Does that remind you of something? One more thing to do is to grab a tuner and make sure that if we play C, it will also output a C note. I'm actually holding F right now, so I'll need to work on tuning here by changing the root note. And now, as you can see, it's still in red, so we need to detune it a little bit. So chances are you used sampler like that to make 808s or something, but I bet you haven't checked those tabs. And they are actually crucial to turn this, let's face it, piece of garbage into fully working and great sounding synth. Here you have basic ADSR controls. Let's go over the pitch and oscillator. We will leave filter and filter envelope for now, since here is one of my favorite features about Sampler. You can turn on oscillator, and as you can see, the godly FM modulation. Just like with any other synth inside Ableton, you have different options to modulate the frequency, so let's just use this Sol 3 option here, and simply just increase the volume of FM. Let's try to change the course of this FM modulation. So you not only restrict it to adding frequency modulation here, you can also control the amount of it by adjusting this envelope here. And let's just actually increase the attack to make it swell. Cool thing about all envelopes inside Sampler is that you can actually change their behavior. Here I have it on none, which is basically working like that. But once I switch it to, let's just say sync and increase the amount or the rate actually, make it a little bit faster. So basically you can turn this envelope into an LFO, but for now let's just go back to none, since we also have a modulation tab to explore. Let's just for example map this LFO1 into filter, and you can do this by just simply increasing the amount of mapping. Then obviously I can change the rate. With those two modulation LFOs, you are actually not restricted to only four parameters. You can bring up this menu and basically map it to anything you want. So for the second LFO, let's just try filter one more time. But this time, let's use the resonance. You can have it synced to your project tempo. Let's change the LFO type to, let's say, square or maybe a saw wave. You can also play with modulation with this aux parameter, which basically gives you another, another envelope to modulate stuff. So here, let's just try to use a filter, let's say frequency. And the same as with basic envelope, here is none, so it basically works like an envelope, but once I change it to beat, two other options which are gonna be cool for sound design is obviously the drive of the filter and the built-in shaper. 
You can set the amount, change the shaper type. So let's just stick with sign for a bit. And this cool option is actually useful if you're gonna do some weird stuff with filters. So for now, let's just say I'm gonna turn it into this type of filter. So now the shaper is shaping the signal before the filter. So let's just feed it back to the filter. So once you finished crafting your carefully manufactured synth with sampler, it would be cool to have it available every single time. That may be a problem since we are using a sample which can be deleted, broken or forgotten on your hard drive. So that's why instead of saving it like that, you need to drag this whole thing inside your browser. Now it would basically create a project file for you and whenever you want to share your presets or just use it on a different computer or something like that you have your sample already here imported so no need to search for different samples on different hard drives and speaking of presets i actually made a few with this technique If you like those presets, you can get them with all of my previous stuff on my Patreon. Yes, it's finally happening. Got some big plans for this one, so for now there are two tiers. First one with all the files from my videos and the second one with some direct feedback, upcoming presets and monthly hangout. You are not restricted to those three LFOs and envelope. You can also modulate stuff while you play. So let's just say my mod wheel, I had it on the shaper amount, but let me just actually try a filter frequency and make it go down and use the mod wheel on my push to try to come up with something cool. And I know, some may say that it's not as effective as using synths like Serum and sound designing. And I agree to some extent, so that's why 